The Big Ten ACC Pac-12 Alliance is expected to be formally announced soon. Now, this was brought up on Friday afternoon by Nicole Auerbach over at The Athletic, and then a lot of other people started running with it. There were more updates that came out on Saturday. And I'm, I'm curious about all of this. I don't know why you would even need to make a formal announcement about, hey, this is how we're going to vote, and this is what we're going to do, and da 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 because they're not really going to give details of exactly what this alliance is. There have been a lot of questions that have come out regarding this alliance. For example, the Big Ten and the Pac-12 are both Fox uh, entities, right? It, it, they do have the ESPN games every so often, right? There's a game that pops up on ABC and this and that. But for the most part, Big Ten has got the Big Ten Network, which is a Fox property, and the Pac-12 does the majority of their television stuff through Fox. The ACC has a deal with ESPN and AB, like the Disney company. And I'm curious about if ESPN comes in and tries to get the ACC to vote to get the playoff rolling earlier so that they have exclusive rights to the expansion. What does the ACC do in that regard? If this has to do with scheduling at all, does ESPN feel like any of the matchups that would come in with Ohio State and Clemson or Florida State and Oregon or whatever, does ESPN feel like those matchups because of the scheduling alliance, is that worth more to ESPN to make them go back to the renegotiating table and actually pay the ACC more money and get them out of their deal before 2036 when it's up? There's a lot that could be in question here. Chris, when you saw that this was going, I mean, obviously we talked about this on last Monday's show because that's when it was first rumored. Is there anything that could come out of a formal announcement that would make you think that this is worth anything other than, hey, we've got a, a two-year commissioner that tried to cancel football and then two first-year commissioners that I don't, I don't know if everybody is always going to be aligned on everything, but apparently they're going to vote together, all 41 teams. Tell me tell me your thoughts here. I mean, like I said, we think that that's the expectation. I think all this does is hurt all the small schools that are in, in those conferences. And the reason it hurts them is because in the ACC, there are far more small schools than there are big schools. Okay, In the Pac-12, there are far more small schools than there are big schools. And – Collectively, as an alliance, they have more, I guess, power and influence over those schools than they do as an individual conference. And therefore, this is just going to be the big boy conferences strong arming the little guys into doing what they want, what benefits them. I do think the ESPN thing is going to play in. If I'm the ACC, they're already not happy with that deal. So they're definitely not giving ESPN any benefit of the doubt. They're definitely not voting for anything to benefit ESPN, even without the alliance, because they're not satisfied with the deal. They they realize they got a they got a bad deal. It's a good deal for ESPN, and ESPN's at, to this point not willing to tear the contract up and renegotiate it and give them you know what they're actually worth. So this is going to work out exactly the way the SEC deal worked out. CBS took advantage of the deal as long as they contractually could. And, and the SEC said, okay, you're owed that because we made a bad deal. But when this deal is up, we're done and we're not partners anymore. And you've burned a bridge. Uh, so I could see that happening. I could see that really happening. At same here. Same here. Uh, Nicole Auerbach, in part of her writing, said, there are many administrators in the Big Ten, Pac-12, and ACC who believe in the collegiate model and want it to continue. Even those who have enthusiastically embraced name, image, and likeness reform don't want to see college football become an actual minor league system for the NFL with a draft, player salaries, and the like. They worry that the SEC's aggression could lead to something like that. I think that the SEC's quote-unquote aggression is way, way overhyped here. All of these conferences, everybody that's freaking out about this, any of these conferences, if Texas and Oklahoma had come to them trying to get out of their Big 12 deal, they all would have done the same thing. Yes. So I don't understand why everybody believes that this is aggression. I don't think the SEC is expanding further. I think they had an opportunity here 
to grab two of the biggest brands in the sport that are also somewhat regionally, what's the word I'm looking for? Regionally yeah, synced. Aligned, yeah. Aligned. Yeah. And and they all seem to want the same thing. Like, it, this is the biggest, baddest brand in college football. It, moving to 16 teams almost always felt like inevitability. Or an inevitability. Sure. I don't. I don't think that any alliance or anything like that is going to stop anything like this. Like, if Clemson and Florida State decide that they want to get out of the ACC, this alliance does nothing. Like, if the Big Ten decides that they want to bring in more teams, this alliance does nothing. That's right. So I, I don't understand why this is becoming such a big thing. I don't think that any of the matchups that brings or that this alliance brings to the table I, will make anybody redo TV deals. I wish I knew what they were afraid of about the collegiate stuff. And, like, college football is a minor league system for the NFL, but it's finally good that these kids are getting paid. They're getting paid through sponsorships, which is probably the best way to do it because to let these schools do it would be a complete disaster because <laughs> these schools are really bad at a lot of things, okay? They're, they're decent at educating, you know, the public. But but I don't I wouldn't even say that they're good at that, by the way. I, I would venture to say that more kids leave all of these college campuses with big, expensive loans, massive debt, a degree, and very few of them get any help or leverage from their university that they graduated from to ever get a job that will actually help pay off that student debt. Yes. So so I don't even think they're very good at the thing that they're supposed to be doing, which is educating uh, the public. All right. So, yeah, uh, you know, much, much less be in charge of paying, you know, college kids equally and equitably and all this other stuff. So, you know, I, I get, you don't want to become a minor league system. What do you think you've been for the last 20 years in football alone? Now, you and I have said this on this show several months ago, this all changed for those that were worried about this becoming somewhat of, of a professional football thing. This all happened when the schools fought the NCAA to get their own television rights. And then they were allowed to package it up into conferences and sell it to the highest bidder. And that number just kept going up and kept going up and kept. Well, that's what they are. What, what What did it take for them to be able to make that much money and to do that? It took getting the NCAA the hell out of the way. Yes. It took moving the biggest governing body, the government, the governing body that oversees it, it took getting them and saying, you're not a part of this. And now look how much money we can generate. It, it's and so I, nuts to think about because look at look at it this way. They still allow a, a lot of the other sports. The NCAA sells the rights to those sports, and but not to football and all, basketball. All of those contracts are bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all of, like, like it's, it's open knowledge. It's open knowledge to everybody who covers this stuff that the NCAA tournament, that the men's basketball tournament is a terrible contract for the NCAA. They're getting dimes on the dollar for, for what they should be getting. Okay. Based it's, on it's, the it's, value of the property. It's the same thing that the ACC is going through right now with ESPN because, and, and it's what the SEC did with CBS. You live now, and you the, learn, the, right? No, 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 no. The difference is, is that ACC contract is a short contract. It is not. Well, no, the ACC <laughs> contract it goes through 2036. Like the SEC's new deal that has not oh, even wow. started yet with okay, ESPN. I didn't know that. It will be up for renegotiation in 2034 before the yeah. ACC's deal. Okay. I and thought the, the ACC, for some reason, I thought the ACC deal was done basically at the end of 2020. No, I, I will tell you this as but part no. of this alliance talk. It, it is interesting to me that the Big Ten's TV contract is up in 2023, and the next one up after that is the Pac-12 in 2025. So the Big Ten, this might be one of those things where the alliance comes in and they start looking at scheduling and this and that after the 2023 season so they can start making money off of those games, and then there's no money left over for the Pac-12. There's there's nothing left for the Big 12 because they're not part of the alliance. And then the ACC – they can't even do anything. They can't even force ESPN to come in and renegotiate unless they add Notre Dame. Like, <laughs> and I don't think I don't think they're adding Notre Dame. What I'm curious, what would happen if they lost teams? If they lose teams, then you go back to the the renegotiating table. 
But at some point in time, they need to add or lose teams to be able to undo their contract. So how how would you go about losing a team if you're the ACC? Uh, you, w- you wouldn't, but I'll tell you what I would do is is I don't think it just has to be Notre Dame. If I'm the ACC and I'm that upset, that that is the conference then that goes and picks off all of these Big 12 teams that are sitting out there because because it's in your best interest to get that contract broken. That's and so oh, yeah. if you add for they, they only have 12 teams in the ACC, right? They're not at 14. No, no, they're they at 14. 14. They're at 14. Okay. Then so if they go get two teams, whichever two they can get and whichever two they want, whatever so their say hearts desire. West you don't Virginia really care. And- you don't really care about the value of those teams, by the way. You really don't give a shit about the value of those teams. You're only bringing them in to to put in whatever language is in the contract that says now we have we have new teams entering, which means all of our current deals have a shelf life. They go away when we add these two new teams, and boom, we're done. Now, now we have to work a new deal out. Yeah, now we um, go back to the table. It would it would be a hundred percent in their best interest to do that, I, just just so they can break the TV deal. I I'll think you're this, right. But it would be it would be it would be worth it for them to find a couple of sacrificial lambs if they couldn't do that to where they say you don't fit in our model. There's no reason for you to be here. You know, we don't need cable boxes in New York anymore. Sorry, Boston College and Syracuse, out of here. Like we're not a northeastern team. They are northeastern teams. So if if they were to do that, the only issue would be one like the contract. You'd have to pay out whatever's left on that contract because you know that those two are not going to go uh, no, easily. But but also but that would, when you do that, you could, it does it does break up that contract, right? It it makes it where you have to go back with ESPN. But if ESPN looks at it and goes. Hey, yeah, but we were paying for inventory. Like that's that's twenty four games that we're not getting now, right. and we also are not going to be in those households because that's. I mean, the ACC network. They're, they're still subscribers. There's still people that that purchase the ACC network. It's not nearly as big as the other ones, but it's just awful way, to get. It's I, I can see where that would be like going back to the negotiating table when you don't have all your ducks in a row could end up being bad for them. So I, I there's. There's a well, lot my, of my, my goal if I'm the ACC is to actually break this deal and then make it to a point where we we're now we're now we're allowed to con- negotiate with everybody because we can we can go get a new deal if you don't offer us a, a deal that we're satisfied with we we can just go get someone else and I do think that Fox is sitting out there w- willing to pick off everything ESPN doesn't want to touch it it is funny to me that that Swafford before he retired like got this deal done because. They realized if they don't have a conference network, which they started the ACC network after the cable cutting, like the cord cutting had already started. Yep. So it was not nearly as profitable anyway, and they couldn't get almost any of the states to put it on as a basic uh, cable pack, like on their basic cable package. So without that, the ACC, like he knew he just had to have a, a cable channel that was dedicated to ACC sports. And even then, like they still don't necessarily operate the channel correctly. Like the the morning radio guys that they have on there talk about like lacrosse and this and that, and they don't they don't hit on the bread and butter, which is football and basketball, all the time. They hit on every collegiate sport, and nobody cares. Like, well, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay to have windows where you're hitting on those things, but it can't be an everyday thing. Exactly, and it can't be a it can't be a regular thing. Like it has to be a you know, when something special in that sport is happening in your conference, you hit on it then and, and you give it some time, but you, that's not what your TV access is for. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, this, this whole thing, the, the Penn state AD uh, did come out and she said on Saturday that the big 10 feels like it's in a really good place as the conference explores an alliance with the ACC and PAC 12. Uh, she said it continues to pay attention to what brings value beyond money. I do think that there are conferences out there that could bring value from a monetary standpoint, particularly speaking about our television contract and our television revenues, Barber said. The Big Ten really prides itself on being more than just an athletics conference in terms of our provost get-together. We share some library resources, some other academic resources. Barber said that 40% of the AAU schools, AAU universities, lie within the Pac-12, Big Ten, and ACC conferences. She said, I'm not trying to downplay the importance of value as it relates to upsizing our revenues. That certainly is important, but that's not the only reason. And I think that there are some reasons around like-mindedness that would be very valuable to the conference. I I do find that interesting. 
it, it makes me wonder about if something like the the pandemic that hit last year. It, she was it, Sandy Barber's one of the ones that was like, "Yeah, we should probably cancel the season." You bring in like mindedness. You start talking about that kind of stuff when you're talking about alliances between collegiate sport conferences, because that's really what these are. These are collegiate sport conferences. I I get real, and my ears perk up. How's that? My ears perk up when I hear something like that, like-mindedness. So the fact that that, that was brought up, mm, we'll see. They, they had their first virtual meeting on Tuesday as the group begins its task of proposing a new governance model, talking about the NCAA stuff. This is going to be interesting to see what ends up happening. I I have no idea what direction they're going to go with this or what it means. I don't even think they do. Uh, but I do know, like we said last Monday, this has more to do with voting and trying to make sure that the SEC does not gain too much power. And I think that they are overthinking it and they're probably going to hurt themselves in the long run. You, you agree with that? Well, I, you, you can't hurt yourself having an alliance. I mean, if... If somebody if, if this is about vote, the playoff or something like that, like it, with the on. playoff, I think it could hurt themselves. Why? Why? Hang on now. What do you mean? I don't understand. How can it hurt themselves? If they vote against a twelve-team model because they don't want the SEC to get too many teams, I think the SEC was never going to get too many teams anyway. Yeah, I don't know that anybody's afraid of that. Do you think they're afraid of that? And there's been a lot of talk about it. That sounds, a yeah, lot but that of, sounds like a lot of people in college football like to talk about shit. But this is a lot of ADs that are worried that the SEC is going to take up five of the six at-large spots. And they're just never going to do that. Well, look at the rankings. Like, yeah. like, you can't just manufacture it. You can't just throw a team in there that's unranked or that's ranked in the 20s in there just because they're an SEC team. Exactly. It doesn't make any sense. Like, this is, this is people being afraid of stuff that shouldn't be afraid of stuff. The 12-team playoff is in the absolute best interest of all the other conferences because the SEC is the only conference, well, the ACC last year technically because Notre Dame was an ACC team member, but the ACC is never getting two teams in again, okay? The, the Big Ten's never getting two teams in. The pac 12s never getting two teams in. They're just not. OK, their their chances every year is to hope to get one of three spots because one spot's going to an SEC team. Yes. And there's a really good shot that right now two teams could get it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're so, right. So going to 12 is the best thing that could happen to everybody else. And anybody that's afraid of going to 12 because they think that somehow helps. The only way it helps the SEC is if ESPN maintains control over it. OK, yeah. And that's one thing that if you're in the alliance, I completely understand and I completely respect, by the way, it, let's open it up to a bid. We have a relationship with ESPN. That's fine. But the playoff can be a relationship with anybody. And what they should do if they ever vote to 12 is they should sell portions of the playoff to all four of the major networks like the NFL yes. does, which is really smart. ESPN pays a metric shit ton of money. Every year for one playoff game, that's it. That's the list, and it's the shittiest playoff game of them all. And it's Every still week. one of the most viewed things on ESPN all year. And they pay they pay a fortune for the for NFL. They get one game a week every week, which is Monday Night Football, and they get the worst playoff game you can get. And, and that playoff game has to be simulcasted on uh, ABC. ABC. Yeah. Yeah. So it has to be on linear television. So so it's one of those th- it's one of those things where if if these all these because even the SEC we're we're the money grubbing sons of bitches that started this okay it's in our best interest to not let ESPN just have all of the playoff we need to get to twelve and then we need to get that soaker sold to give NBC a game give give Fox, CBS a game CBS, let them let like all let them. all of them just like the Super Bowl man let all of them rotate out so like nbc if notre dame has a clause in there to where if notre dame's in the playoff we get we we have to get at least one of notre dame's home uh, the games it doesn't matter yeah doesn't matter what where it's being played we have to get at least one of them so if if you know they're going to be playing the first weekend because they're not a conference member so so they can't get one of the top four spots so that game whether they're home or road nbc just gets like that, nobody gets to bid or, on that. Or it set it up how- where it, each, like a rotating schedule where they get to draft 
whatever the the best playoff game is or the the most viewed. yeah but if but if you have an alliance with like if if Fox has an alliance with the Big 12 and the Big 12 or the Pac 12 and Pac 12 gets a team in and they're hosting the game they're the home team then then Fox should get first dibs at that game Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And then they yeah. have to say, no, we'll we'll forgo that and you can have something else. I'm okay. There's a way to do this where you make everybody happy and you also make everybody a lot of money. There's a way to do this to where you can go tell CBS, hey man, I know you don't have real college football anymore. You're I don't know what CBS is gonna put on anymore at all. Maybe, maybe they're just completely out of the college football game, but would would they be interested in a playoff spot? You know, I'd, hell, I'd, I'm gonna I hell, I'm going to be willing to bet and I'm going to try to sell them one because if they're just buying one game a year, they might pay a shitload of money for that one game. Yes. Yes, they absolutely could. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.